welcome. We're going to be doing interactive site audits. The organizers were kind enough to put together this very fancy box for you to put your website names in, right? And uh, we're going to have Sarah select websites at random so you guys don't think that we're playing favorites. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull up your website, we're going to make fun of it for a little bit, and then we're going to get serious, and we're going to tell you everything that's wrong. When I pull up your website, uh, I'm going to ask you whose site is this. Hopefully your name's on here. And while we're pulling all of our stuff up, tell us about your site. Tell us what you do, what your conversions are, how do you monetize, what's the, what's the goal, <laughs> and are you looking to just like have us roast your site, or is there specific SEO questions that you want answered? Cool? All right. Cool. Cool. All right, we're alive. Good, good. All right. All right, here we go. Eatingrules.com. There you go. Andrew. So my site is a food blog called Eating Rules. Um, my philosophy is that healthy eating doesn't have to suck. And uh, what are the questions? What's my goal? Um, I try to help people eat healthier and live better lives uh, through what they eat. Um, I run an annual challenge called October, October on Process, where I try to get as many people as possible to eat no processed food. So I'm gearing up for that right now. Um, but throughout the year, I, uh, um, uh, I've actually pulled back on the amount of time I'm spending blogging. So my traffic's been dwindling, and from January to now, it's kind of been going down, and it's on an uptrend now that it's going into October. Uh, I monetize through advertising, so page views are really important. Um, so I'd love to know some strategies to take my existing content and or site structure and improve it to help boost my traffic without having to write lots of new blog posts. Um, I'm also uh, just I've just launched a new product to sell, a uh, course called Real Food Rescue, that I haven't really promoted yet on the site. But if somebody takes that over on Process Challenge, I get a discount on that. So I just launched that this week. So I'll be adding some promo for Real Food Rescue in there. But my primary thing is just sort of looking for any technical issues and uh, easy wins to help improve my SEO. Awesome. Cool. All right. So while uh, um, Sarah and Renee pull up. Sorry, we have internet issues. Okay, cool. So this is SEM Rush. It's an awesome tool. Um, it's expensive, but I think I can get you guys uh, uh, trials. So tweet at me, uh, top at arson, um, and uh, I'll respond once I have the code. Uh, this is SEM Rush. This is uh, an intelligence tool that we use in house all the time, and it gives us all kinds of interesting data. What I like to look at, what I like to look at is keyword trend, right? Uh, and here are all of the keywords that uh, are, according to SEM Rush, are bringing you traffic right now, Andrew. Uh, so you have dry beans, which is ranking in position three. You were position five last month. You guys can see that, right? No. no. Boom. Is that better? Yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So these are your, 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 we can safely assume these are your traffic drivers because uh, uh, you know, you're ranking the top four positions here. Uh, um, and these are your, uh, uh, again, traffic drivers. Looks like they're not all branded or they're not branded at all. So this is, a good, this is good news. Your keywords are distributed very nicely. You have 461 keywords in the top three positions of page one on Google. Uh, and this is your 1,677 keywords uh, that are below the fold of page one, right? So position four through seven. That's four through ten, and then this is the rest of your keyword inventory through the rest of the pages. Um, on the inner side, we'll look at a historic trend, and let's take a look at um, let's take a look at last year, right? So just like everybody else, through the updates that we saw in the beginning of this year, uh, looks like you took a little bit of a hit from February to March, and it looks like you went from fifty thousand keywords in the top 10 pages of Google to 39,000, right? Uh, but let's look from February, 50,093, to today, 27,000. So a huge drop off there. Uh, but let's focus on the traffic drivers, and here we're gonna isolate only the keywords that are in the top on, on page one, right? Uh, and that trend doesn't look too bad now, right? 3,242, excuse me, 424, uh, keywords on page one 
in February 2138. So the loss here is it's a pretty decent loss, uh, a little bit over a thousand keywords, but not as drastic as when we look at the entire picture, right? Um, this is, again, this trend is not very indicative of, of like a penalty, because you're still ranking. Uh, but through these updates, Google did um, find other sites that are more relevant for some of these keywords, right? Um, Google doesn't really like penalize you or filter you down. Google doesn't take any action to decrease your rankings algorithmically. Google typically just rewards somebody else, right? Somebody who's doing a better job, and they push them up, and the byproduct is you moving down on the pages, right? Um, but this is this is kind of what's happening uh, um, on your site from a uh, um, domain level perspective. Uh, Sarah, what do you have? Um, so far, your your overall site architecture is is pretty good. You have um, good breadcrumb structure going on on your post. That is great relationship between posts and categories. Um, you can optimize your URLs a little further. Um, you have like the word category in your URLs, which is not helping at all. It's not possibly relevant to those pages. Um, you also are missing meta descriptions in all of your category pages. So you want to put something in there to fulfill the, the meta description component of it. Um, your H tags look good, so I don't really have anything to complain about there. Um, you're doing a, a lot of internal linking and external linking, um, at least in the posts that I've looked at so far. Um, I would maybe want to be a little more picky about when you decide to link from your, from your post to other posts, since um, linking does create a relationship between your pages and it is a, a, a powerful source um, that spiders will follow. Um, you don't want to just link willy-nilly and put a ton of links into your content. You want to be very careful and very specific about where you link something. That's definitely um, something that you could kind of hone down a bit more. Uh, Andrew, what's, what's, uh, what is this? What's in your footer? Looks like it's a, it's a, it's a frame, but not. I have no idea. Yeah, so this is like another, you have another head and body sitting inside your page. Is it coming from my ad network, maybe? I don't know. You might want to take a look at that. Yeah. Right. Because Google Crawls, it's renderable. So Google Crawls so that you have two titles. Yeah. Interesting. Um, real quick question on the cross-linking yeah. stuff. I have um, those thumbnails that are still on the screen right there. I've got basically like six of my top posts that are in my sidebar. Mm -hmm. Or so, but yeah, those guys. Um, is that the links you're talking about? Or? Uh, I'm seeing them in the content. So like, uh, for example, OK, so there's a post that I'm looking at here. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, the Molten Sea Crackers post, and right off the top, it looks like this might have been a contributor, someone else um, wrote it for you, Linda. In her bio is right at the top of your page, and you automatically, in her bio, there are five links already coming out of that instantly, um, going to her social media sites and her blog, which it's fine that you're linking to her other stuff, and I assume that these are probably the follows, um, but that's a lot of links right at the very top of your page. Um, so you might want to put her bio kind of down more towards the bottom. Um, then in the content of that post, you're looking at, so you have one link here for October, the October Unprocessed Challenge, which is fine. Then you have another link that's going to um, Kitchen Test, Bob's Red Mill, No Spice Carrots Hummus, and a Mommy Dip. So it's just, this is all within the first, I'm going to guess this is maybe, 300 words of your content, you now have five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have 10 links in, in roughly the first 300 words. So that, that's a lot. Um, so I'd be really more, it's more picky about where you want to link. So is this October unprocessed challenge something that you're really interested in ranking for over the multi seed crackers? So is it, are you just putting it there as something that's useful to users and maybe there's a different way you can incorporate that into like a feature post or like a related post? Or is it something where you want search engines to understand that this content is related to each other and you want to go, you want to pass 
the spiders from this post to your October challenge. It, it depends on what you're, you're prioritizing and really how you want to funnel where they go throughout your site. Andrew, we've got to move on, but the last thing I'm going to say is your pages in the series for, for your paginated uh, uh, archives, you're handling the rel next prev canonicalization properly, but you don't have the actual canonical present. So the canonical needs to be self-referencing so that Google knows that this is the page, rel next is the following, rel prev is the previous. All of those are three canonicals, right? Uh, that's all the time we have for Andrews. Cool. Thank you. Chance for meditation, are you here? Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so this is basically a pet project for me. It is a blog, it is a resource for people who are into meditation. Uh, I have actually not put in, I would say, any thought. Chance, C H A N T S. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I have that Yoast plugin currently installed, and I think that is pretty much the extent of SEO that I am you know, doing or not doing. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, you want to transition to HTTPS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's first thing. Big thing right off the bat. Talk to your host; they should be able to help you out with that. And then when you do uh, migrate to HTTPS, make sure that your redirects are in place uh -huh. and that the not secure version is always redirecting to the secure version. You don't, you don't make two, two versions of your site available. All right, uh, you're ranking uh, about 89 keywords across the first 10 pages of Google. Here are your traffic drivers according to SEMrush. Currently, there are no keywords in the top three positions. You do have two keywords on page one below the fold, position four through 10, uh, 15 keywords on page two, nine keywords on page three. Take a look at your trend. Okay, so it looks like you actually uh, um, did pretty well through the updates. Uh, you did get a little bit of a hit. Uh, um, no, looks like February, you grew from uh, 19 to 35 keywords, kind of plateaued, then dropped out. So this update, uh, um, this was a core algorithmic update. This was a correction to the one that they released in March. Uh, again, it's all about quality, organization, and topics. Um, so it looks like it corrected here, and then there was another update that they didn't, Google didn't confirm, because they're assholes. Um, <laughs> but the SEMrush sensor, which is a sensor that measures volatility in an algorithm, showed that there was some turbulence there, and you did nicely. So you, you gained, you're up to 80 keywords in August, and then 88 keywords in September. Majority of your growth is happening uh, below page one, which is good, which is a good time. If you look at your keywords, looks like you do need to do a little bit of focusing. Like this phone number, is this relevant in any way? I don't think so. Yeah, so Google's ranking you for this phone number for some reason, right? So <laughs> it looks like some just things need to be a little bit more laser focused for you. Um, this is the page that Google is selecting for that phone number. Do you know what this page is? Yeah, so this is basically a business directory listing plugin. Okay. Yeah, so it basically is listing all the vegan or vegan friendly restaurants. Gotcha, so it's probably a phone number that, yeah, that it picked yeah, up here. Yeah. Perfect. Sarah, what do you see? Um, I'm also seeing you have a lot of uh, competing topical focus across a couple of different pages. Okay. So um, your home page is your primary page for meditation chance, that's where you want keywords for that to land. However, you also have forward slash chance for meditation and forward slash meditation chance. All three of those are basically targeting the same types of keywords, so you have three pages that are all equally as relevant for them, which is confusing to Google, and so it's not sure, your homepage is gonna win because your homepage automatically has more authority, but you, um, you're, com you're competing with your other two pages. So instead of having separate two, three pages that are basically talking about the same thing, focus that all into one page so you have one really highly authoritative page for that. Um, the other thing is you can um, optimize a lot of your category page titles a lot better, which is something that you can do through Yoast. 
Currently, it looks like it's just kind of the standard out of the box. You have words like archives in your page titles, which are really not helping you at all for that. Um, you also want to go through and uh, no index your block tag pages, because there's just stuff that's clogging up the index in here. Again, it's not really relevant uh, as far as like a landing page that you would want someone to come into. Um, from your site. You're also, your author archives are in here too. You already have an about page for, let's see, two different people here. Yeah. Um, so if someone, if those are notable people that you would potentially want someone searching for their name to come into that page, those about pages are already going to rank for that. So you want to just get, no index, get rid of the author pages because again, it's not really serving you, not helping you. So focus Google's attention on the stuff that you want to focus on mm -hmm. rather than all of this extra sort of stuff. There you go. Okay, so I was checking out the, the uh, analytics. The analytics installation is fine, but I do see besides the fact that it, you, we are not at HTTPS, um, we also uh, it doesn't automate. We don't have a preference whether it's www or non www. Um, it both uh, whether you type in www or not, it does uh, come up. That's kind of an analytics nightmare uh, because what analytics does is it does. Uh, um, it will show two versions of the same page. So therefore, you will have a complete set of duplicate pages if you try and figure out um, what type of organic traffic, what type of this, what type of that. Uh, you're not going to have a set count as far as where it goes because of the, the duplication. So it's going to get filled up. It's going to get loaded. Uh, that's one thing we notice. Uh, another thing is we're looking at the document outline. Now, this is dealing with your heading tags that Sarah talked about, H1, H2. Which page are you? On which page? Document one? Uh, we are going to go to two of them. First one would be the home page. Okay. Now the home page is missing an H1. H1 is of course your, your topic. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's your focus. Um, and at the top of the page, we are missing that. And the first thing that we see is actually goes to straight to H3, which is type to search. Mm -hmm. We're not too focused on the, uh, the H3 tags. Um, but as far as everything lines up, we have the H2 tags that work in the, oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> that are, are in the, uh, the hero in the front, but then when we see a very large H3 there at the bottom, yeah, we want to keep these tags topic focused. Okay. And then when we go on to another page, one of the category pages, which would be the category Shiva Chance, this one is also missing an H1. Shiva Chance. That would be our topic. That would be our H1. Okay, so that's what we're missing. Um, and then there are also no other. Uh, well, we do have a little bit of. But yeah, so we are missing the H1. So therefore, we're missing the H1. So we're missing. The H1. Your site does need cleanup. Yeah. Uh, you, you, it's kind of all over the place. You have things that live in the root. You have things that live in the silo. As far from from an information retrieval standpoint, Google is super confused on what's happening, and that's why you have all these weird keywords that are ranking, and that's why you don't have this like like what you saw on Android site, but nice stack, because you always have more keywords in lower pages, right? And you're like this, yeah. right? So Google's having a hard time on your site. Okay, we're moving on. Perfect tone. That's me. Hey. Hey, uh, Adam Bell, Data TV. Um, so I run a Lincoln web design studio in the Valley, and this is one of my clients. Uh, last year, I somehow ended up getting, getting up a lot of skincare websites. Uh, a couple of Shopify, a couple of WordPress uh, that are about to be re uh, redesigned. So I'm going to do that here. And then this one, which is actually based in the Bahamas. So it's a skincare company. Uh, we took actually from a CMS that actually, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but like one of those we've never heard of. It's not Drupal, it's not Joomla, it's not Squarespace. It's even worse than those. <laughs> um, it, it was like the design was terrible. Yeah, awesome. And we redesigned it, it took about to WordPress with cards about a year and a quarter ago. Okay, so this is on WordPress right now, right? Yeah, so WordPress, WooCommerce. Okay. All right, so uh, they're ranking for the brand, which is good, uh, um, and you know, misspellings of the brand, and sell. You know, so uh, nice graph here. Three keywords in top three. Three keywords below the fold position four through ten. Ten keywords page two. Ten keywords page three. Ten keywords page four. You get the point. Uh, let's look at the. Right? That's good. Yeah. Uh, not much happening, but it's good. Um, so it looks like similar similar trend, right? So you, there was a hit in the first uh, uh, core update in the beginning of the year. 
went from 143 in top 10 to 54, kind of plateaued, 54 to 62. Then when that correction happened, you started going up, and then we had this last update again to the core. Um, so this was the, the quality, quality update. This is the EAT update, right? One that we talked about earlier. Uh, and then that kind of spanked you around a little bit. Um, even though it seems like you did win in the top three positions. Well, not really, but it got better, right? <laughs> Um, it looks, it looks like the site is like either fairly new or just there's not enough authority there. Um, let me see. Let's go. Sarah, go ahead. Um, so, I love that you have breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs are great. Those are awesome. Happy about that. Um, you do not have schema markup on your products. Uh, schema markup. On your schema markup. Schema markup. Schema.org markup. Oh, no, yeah. Um, so definitely want to put those in there on your products. Um, as put in a schema markup, offer markup, and also review and aggregate rating because you do have star reviews here and right. you want that to show up um, in search results. Um, also, um, you can, some of your pages, so you have your products in your product category, which is great. Um, you have a lot of other product uh, pages that are just sing sitting single level, and so we don't really understand like what is the overall topic of those pages. So such as, um, didn't get perfect tone results expecting, here's a reason. Um, Embrace the sun, summer hacks for healthy skin, flawless skin guide for your best 40s. Those are all sitting just single level, so we don't understand like how those pieces of content relate to the domain. If they do all fit under one specific type of focus, um, then you would want to put them all in one silo. I don't know if maybe those are blog posts. Um, there is a blog. Okay, so that, that could be what that stuff is there. Let me, let me ask you a question. I mean, like, uh, I was mentioning yesterday about the page speed, because like, one thing we did had here for a while was the page speed wasn't very good. They were running a lot of third party apps. They still run some like Intercom, for example, for chat, uh, which is kind of necessity. Uh, those don't know what that is. That's a little circle you see on the bottom right of the screen that you want to chat with someone. You come and you can do that. That does another one. Uh, and then are with you can like social media and things like that. Do you find you find those that they can get with uh, with PhD or stuff like that, or is that you know? Like, um, some of them are more. Some of them are fun to be more than that. I mean, so far, I think. I mean, just from accessing. I mean, the, the internet is not great here. So no, just no. with what we're doing now with accessing the site, I wouldn't say that page speed would be a big issue because everything's coming up like, pretty right. well. If your images are rendering like real, like quickly. I'm not like it's not. It's not the biggest. It's not yeah. the most of your concerns right now at all. You have other things to worry about. Uh, the site is just very fresh, man. You, yeah. If we look at your backlink profile, you have uh, 66 backlinks from 26 referring domains. That's that's nothing. Especially in the beauty space, you have to like wrap that up, right? Yeah. Um, you have decent saturation on the on the backlinks. Um, you're linking to the site with your name in the anchor text. Just look at that, Adam Bell. Yeah. It, so there's a link from somewhere that's pointing to this site, to your client site, with the anchor text that has your name in it. I have no idea it's coming Find it. Are you on that? <laughs> <laughs> 10GA or? Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 yeah. Um, no, this is uh, Ahrefs. Where is it? Ahrefs. Oh, Ahrefs, okay. Yeah. Well, well, just just one link. But again, it's not. I use SEMrush for uh, domain data right. and Ahrefs for backlinks. I mean, what are you using right now? What's, what page are you using right now? What screen? Oh, this is just the basic, the, 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 the screen that lands you on, the, the overview. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Rene. Okay. Um, now, what I'm seeing, if you can go to the, the home page. Okay, now we're looking at the, um, everything checks out as far as HTTP, HTTPS, all that good stuff. Uh, now, when we're looking at the document outline, the H1s, H2, um, we it, ex, it is exposing two H1 tags. I know, but the problem is it's uh, they, they sometimes have these modules that basically <laughs> just stop H1s. It's, well, what it's doing is I'm actually, because we see the two H1s, that is the same, it's I'm see a brand new U, which ones that we're seeing uh, 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 duplicate content on the right. homepage. Doubling content. Doubling. Yeah, Thank you. Not duplicate, doubling. Okay, so we have doubling content on the homepage. 
that does need to be remedied. Now, when we look at the sign up for details, free, of course, as Arsene was talking, we don't want to have any lower H2s above an H1. Right. When we look at the perfect tone forward slash shop, we see that same thing. Sign up for the specials, free worldwide shipping up right. above the H1. And then when we go on to a product page, we see the same thing. So we have now this set of H1 that is now completely all across site wide. Right. So what this does is it starts to dilute. Things. Right. So in other words, let me just go back to the homepage for a second. Um, I already moved off your page. Okay. You're over time. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> uh, just really fast. We can talk. We can talk after. Yeah, sure. Um, your speed isn't bad. I mean, you definitely want to get this to be around four seconds or less. Right. Uh, uh, but it's 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 not it's not holding you back. No, I think so. Obey giant. <laughs> Not in the room. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Tell us about your site. Um, it's a site for my boss. And <laughs> just a portfolio of his products and what he's doing and things like that. How do you monetize? Uh, we have a shopping cart. That's, what do you sell? Uh, art prints. Gotcha. It's from uh, Shopify. My kind of art. Okay, let's take a look. Not bad at all. Forty six. What? What? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So the site is uh, sorry. The site is ranking seven thousand eight hundred and fifty keywords for across the first ten pages of Google. Uh, here are your top traffic drivers. Seems like they're on target. Here you have uh, um, you have a brand here and. Uh, um, this is your boss, Shepard? Yeah. Okay. So, looks like Google's understanding what the site is about. That's good. 653 keywords in the top three positions. 717 below the fold, so homepage is doing good. Um, homepage is actually your strongest page. Sorry, not homepage. First page of Google is your strongest page. Uh, 637 keywords on page two, 603 on page three. Here's your historic trend. So it looks like you did get somewhat of a fluctuation here, about 2,000 keywords left, and then it came back 7,870. Um, so you're not that off, uh, not that big of a hit. If we take a look at page one keywords, you went from uh, 1,506 to 1,370, and if we look at top three keywords, sorry, top three positions, uh, in uh, February, you had 724, and now you're at 653. Right? Did you notice a decrease in traffic, organic traffic? So one thing you do have to do when you see that, and it's like uh, um, a handful of keywords exited that affected your traffic. Right? So the goal, the, what you need to do now is forensics. You have to identify which keyword exited what position for which page. Right? So you can either do it with this tool, because down here, you can select the keyword, and then up here, you can click on the date, and it will show you what the keyword was on that month. Now, this tool, again, is a paid tool. Google Search Console will allow you to do this with queries, right? So compare, like, three weeks before the drop-off in traffic, three weeks after, and then sort by pages to see which pages were isolated, which pages were affected, right? And then go back and click on queries and see which queries were mapped to those pages. Now, GSC, Google Search Console, sucks at giving you positions because they average it out. Uh, we had a client who was ranking for a keyword on position three on Google, dropped to position four, but then decreased their traffic by 60,000 <laughs> referrals, right? From three to four. In Google Search Console, that's going to average out to 3.5, and we'll never diagnose that, right? But take a look at Search Console and see which pages, and that way you'll be able to kind of work your way backwards to identify like what needs to be fixed, right? Sarah? Is the main site on WordPress, and then you have Shopify in the subdomain, right? Uh, 
Um, so, okay, so this is uh, just doing a site search in Google to see what URLs are coming up in Google's index. Sorry, um, one second. Guys, so you guys know what the site command does, right? No. No? So site, when you site call it and then your domain, it will show you all the URLs that Google has for your site and its index. Some people say that it's organized in the order of authority. I don't believe it. But these are all the, all the domains, sorry, all the URLs. There's 7,700 in Google's index right now. Go ahead, sir. Um, usually we would see the homepage here at the top. Um, for some reason, it, it's not um, showing up as the first URL. But you can see that the URLs that are coming up, a lot of them are forward slash a number. That's not very descriptive at all as far as what is on those pages. Um, we really don't know what content is there because the URL just forward slash a number. So I'd update those to be something that's descriptive to the URL. Um, I'd also, a lot of these seem to be um, like, like prints. Um, so put all of that into a, a silo or a folder that is descriptive of everything that's under it. So if they're prints, create a fine art print folder and then put all of the products under it. So then Google will understand that all of these pages relate to the fine arts folder. Um, and then put breadcrumbs in there and like all that sort of good stuff as well. Um, you can do the same thing for your blogs and your articles, because right now everything is just kind of single level all over the place. It's not uh, really well structured um, and, or you know put together based on like your main topic and then creating subtopics. Um, the page titles could also be optimized better as well. A lot of the, the category page titles still have archive in them, which is default from Yoast. Um, which it really isn't super helpful. Also, your blog is returning a 403 forbidden error, so crawlers cannot access it. So that's something that should be changed as well. Okay, um, real brief on the homepage, um, it goes to a non WW form when you try and type when you type in www.obhi.com. Sorry, one second. Yeah. What, what, what are we doing? Just type in uh, www. Without the blog? Just, it doesn't matter. It's all encompassing. So oh, yeah. that is an error that we have. But one of the things I do want to mention before, because I know we're running out of time, I tested your analytics. You, I see two instances of your analytics tag inside the body of, inside the, body of the site. Because of this, we are, even though we are registering three page hits, which is the test that I did, we are registering six page views. Now what this does is it increases the, it skews your stats. So any type of uh, uh, conversions, anything like that, is incorrect. So that definitely needs to be looked into and fixed uh, for you. Please. So, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. Multiple instances of an H1 tag on your Page. On the homepage, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. So one thing I would do is I would do a, a, a deep crawl of your site and then take a look at the server log files because that 403 is kind of weird because it's still loading but it's blocking some stuff. Uh, so go through the server logs, see specifically for that URL because might, this might be like intermittent uh, uh, alternating response codes. So like maybe today it's like this and tomorrow it's going to be different, right? Uh, so log, server log files will help you. Next. Girlsgameshelf.com. Yes. Hey. Yard? Yes. Tell us about your site. All right. This is a site for a friend of mine's YouTube uh, series. Um, she, uh, it's a uh, board game uh, review series. And I was uh, called upon to create the site for it. The goal is to uh, add more subscribers and also to uh, get her more uh, sub uh, contributors, patrons on Patreon. Awkward silence. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> As you guys are going through, could you tell us the browser extensions you're using? Oh, sure. Uh, so this is a web developer extension. This one's being deprecated. Uh, you don't care about that. This is to make sure I don't write like I sound. 
Uh, this tells me what technology, uh, what specializer tells me if it's WordPress or Shopify or whatever have you. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Um, why? <laughs> okay, so it looks like there's zero pages in Google's index for this domain. So Google doesn't know you exist. Okay. Or some weird shit might be happening. Uh, you're not being, your ro robot's file is not blocking, uh, you're not being no index through your robot's file, so that's... Uh, is there a robot's file? There is a robot's file. Yeah. Not much, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're off of index. You fell off. Yeah. So, cool. All right, let's see what's happening. Were you able to crawl? Um, in your meta robots. Ah. <laughs> your meta robots on your homepage, not in your robots.txt file, but the meta robots on your homepage says no index follow. Hmm. So your entire site is being so yeah. that's a, a eighty dollar fee that's uh, in the mail to you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and uh, uh, remove this line completely, or just change it to follow. Well, oh, index follow. So now you, what, what, what's basically happened? So no index follow. I'm just like I'm pissed about this. It's useless. It's freaking useless. It's a robots directive that tells Google, "Go ahead and crawl through my pages, but don't index any of the information." It's like what's the point, right? Uh, um, you're just wasting crawl budget allocation, and you're sending Google through your site, and Google's like, okay, no, no, no crawl it, but I'm not gonna put you into index, as you can see here, right? Uh, so this is supposed to be index follow, get get index, get cache. That's it. Thanks. Three, eight, five. Oh, try again. Just read it like uh, creative. <laughs> pretend it's a license plate. Creative photo mats. Yep. This is pretty cool. Cool card. Yeah. Is it creative dot? No, oh, creative. It's you have one. Creativephotomats.com or creatived.com. We're there. We made it. You're on WordPress. Awesome. I am. Okay. Tell us about your site. Tell us what you do. Sure. So what I do are these creative photo mats. They're eight by ten photography mats. They're a little bit more, you know, designer. Something unique to help reinvent your uh, your photos and your memories. Um, so I have a, a bigger line of products, but for now I'm just trying to market the eight by ten photo mats. So the site has been up for a while. I just recently did a theme update, which kind of messed up my uh, those three boxes that say click here. Those had images in them prior, but once I did the theme update, there was an issue. So those should all go to uh, a different page. Okay, I got you. Okay, so. Nothing on page one, nothing on page two. Page three, you have three keywords. Page four, you have one keyword. Mm -hmm. Page five, you have three keywords. So not much happening there. Mm -hmm. iHeart Daddy picture frames, personalized photo mats, creative design, grandma rocks. She does. Um, <laughs> I love mini picture frames. So it looks like Google, again, is not confused about what's happening in your site. It understands what you're doing. The problem is you're not ranking. The closest to the top you are is on page three with a keyword that has 90 monthly searches and has a keyword difficulty of 81. Uh, heart shaped photo mat. Look at that. So Google is finding the right site, matching the right, uh, the right page, matching to the right keyword, so that's good. Um, you have zero authority. You have uh, six backlinks from two referring domains. That's like Twitter and Facebook. Like you can make this four domains right now, right? Just like linking it. Uh, definitely do link building, promote your site, uh, collaborate with other people, get a link from them, support an organization or something, 
get it going. Do a press release. Okay. Press releases are good if you don't abuse them and you have something that's newsworthy. What they do is they lay a nice foundation of no follow links. These are links that carry no follow attributes, so they don't pass any authority. But they create a nice foundation for your link building efforts because Google likes to see diversity in the type of links that you're building. Because if you build the same link over and over, Google sees that as a pattern, right? And Google doesn't like that. So do a press release, think about it, how you want to structure that press release. Don't be like, oh, we're doing a giveaway, or we just launched a new photo map, right? Uh, um, reach out to a local uh, uh, shelter for dogs or cats and say you'll donate uh, something, uh, you know, photo mats for adopted something, right? Create a story around it, you'll get links from even sponsor, give somebody sponsor the, the shelter. Get a link from there, do a press release about it, work that story. Create your own news, right? Mm -hmm. Sarah? Um, so products are in product category, that looks good. Um, so overall, the structure of your site with the breadcrumbs and all that stuff is pretty good. Um, page titles is a major place that you could really work on. Okay. The page title of your homepage is creative photo maps, creative D. That doesn't tell me what your site is about. Okay. You know it's about creative photo mounts, but what you just told us when you were telling us about your site, that was way more descriptive than what you're, than the, than the okay. information that you're giving Google here. Uh -huh. um, same thing for your product categories. So you have um, forward slash product category, forward slash for him. What's for him? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what's in there? Put some descriptive information in your URL. Um, page title for that is also just for him. There's nothing in there to tell me to tell me to tell Google what is on this page. Okay. Um, you also would want to implement a schema markup on your product pages because um, that's currently not on those either. Um, but yeah, I think it, uh, page titles and backlinking are definitely going to be. Okay. Big okay thank you. I'm going to jump ahead yeah. of Renee here. Yeah. Um, you're, you're missing an H1, you're missing an H2, and you're missing an H3 on your home page. Okay. All very important signals for Google to tell Google what the page is about. Okay. So in Google's eyes, this is a fairly fresh website. Mm -hmm. You need work, but you're, I mean, nothing bad's happening. Just, uh -huh. It's a little too fresh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's, do we have another one? Uh, Renee, do you have stuff to say? No, no, you guys. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Sure, sure. So yeah. the fact that the product name and the business name has the eight in it, which nobody's going to type in, is that a negative? I mean, do you think that I should, like, if I purchased another domain with Creative Sculpt correctly and did a, you know, redirect, would that be of any benefit? So it might be easier for people to remember and go to your site directly. Google does not care what you call it, the, the domain. The exact match is a thing of the past. Okay. So you don't have to be like. Uh, photomats.com or creativephotomats.com. Okay. You can call it creative with an eight dot com. Okay. Uh, and you can as long as you use these H ones, H twos, H threes, the titles, the the URL to signal Google that this site is about this stuff. It doesn't matter what you call it. Okay. All you can call right. it arsonisawesome.com. I'm gonna think about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more, last one. aa graphicscom Hey. hey. So I'm a graphic and web designer. Um, most of my clients are local, Long Beach area. Um, basically a portfolio site. I'm just trying to get, you know, more clients. Okay. Do you have a Google My Business profile set up? Um, I don't think so. So if you're going to offer services locally, you've got to have a Google My Business profile. Uh, just like I, I talked in my session, that make your brand an entity explicit. Google My Business tells Google that you're a local business, right? Um, and it's the easiest thing you can do. Make sure you fill out your categories properly. Um, oh, so Jen already has all of our slides, and she's going to email everybody with the links to them. And people are so um, you can no index your tag pages. That's kind of clogging up when, when oh, yeah. I do a site search. That's some of the first things that are coming up here. No um, index, no follow. No index, no follow. And that I mean they're not really relevant to 
people coming in and converting for you, so that's just extra stuff that's eating up your crawl budget that you don't really want to deal with. Um, your categories, um, you also have categories that can be cleaned up as far as page titles. Again, archive is in um, the page title for the categories. Um, on your portfolio pages, you do have um, optimized page titles. They could be a little more optimized. So you have like forward slash portfolio, forward slash business cards, and the title there is just business cards, AA graphics. Give me a little more information than just business cards. So what else about those business cards do you want people to be searching for to land on that page? Um, same thing with your homepage. So your homepage page titles, AA graphics is a graphic design and web development, etc. So the beginning of your page title is the most important part. Putting AA graphics is A at the beginning is not super helpful. So just put it here, put graphic design and web development right up front, put AA graphics <coughs> more, toward, more towards the back. Um, um, obviously, super fresh site, you, did, you got beat up. Um, this graph looks worse than it is, but uh, um, yeah, you got beat up in these updates. Um, especially, so you, cut, you, you spiked up during the first two updates, quality updates, and then that correction that Google did uh, uh, um, in May uh, dropped you back down, and you kind of been just like plateaued there, right? Um, I think if you introduce if you if you introduce Google My Business into this, you're gonna start seeing more keywords enter because now you're gonna be ranking for keywords like graphic design, Long Beach graphic designer, Long Beach, right? Uh, you don't have to show your address in Google My Business. So if you don't have an office, you work from home, you don't want people showing up there, right? I wouldn't. So you can hide your address and you can do a service area mapping around it. So you can say like 10 miles around the zip code, right? Whatever. Uh, as you really don't care for that. All you care about is that signal that Google knows what you are and what you do, right? And you're gonna see these keywords start coming up. They're not gonna hit page one because the site's fresh, it needs work. You need backlinks. Um, just continue working on it. Add more content. Add more content and add more pages. So you currently essentially have one big page on your home page with anchors that you can jump around in. Um, so I go down to the services section here, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that you do that you offer. Graphic design, web design, printing. This is a really competitive um, vertical. So you want to build out pages that are focused around each of those Services specifically. Yeah. So that way you can really, really optimize and and show that you you are an authority and that you have a lot of quality around this specific topic. So create a separate page for your graphic design services. Create one for web design. Create one for printing. And like really build those pages out with optimized page titles and h tags and like really good content and all that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing is I don't see a contact page either. You have your contact information in your footer, but you have to scroll all the way down through this very long page in order to get to your contact information. Especially if you want to rank locally, having a contact page that has local business schema markup on it is really going to help you rank in, in the, the local position. Well, I changed it to a get a quote page. Basically, it is a contact page. Oh, request a quote. Okay. Do you think I should change the name or? Um, I don't. It's not in your top navigation. So like okay. if I click if um, here I start scrolling down. Um, so in this, can you show that? Yeah. Or, so yeah, right there. So you're fine. So close the hamburger. So without opening the hamburger, all I see is about services, testimonials, and clients. I don't see a way to get in touch with you, right? Not very intuitive. Okay. At the same time, um, so. You can still keep it as a as a one pager. There is a script. I'm not sure what it's called, but for every section, it will append uh, uh, like a slash something, right? So Google will still see them as separate pages. You do have a Google My Business listing. This is you. Okay. Speaking of locals, okay. So I did a search for um, uh, for your business. Now I do see that. I do see some form of Google My Business listing because it's not saying, do you own this business? Da, da, da. If you see something, you own this business, then that's a pretty good indication that it might not be there, so it looks like there was something. 
Um, now the thing is, is when I pull it up, I see the, the, my business on the side, and I do see the information. But the other thing that I see as far as the search results is a Yelp in which I see a slightly different phone number. Uh, we want to keep these things consistent. So if we have a, a phone number on Google My Business, phone number on Yelp, a phone number on Facebook, we want those all together. Because um, what it does is, is it gives a, a little bit more, more oomph as far as uh, who you are, what you do, and the fact that you exist. Now, I also did a, a check um, through our YEX database to see how your listing comes up. Uh, we literally checked through about 60 different citation sources such as Yahoo, Bing, Foursquare, MapQuest, all of that. You only come up maybe six out of 60. So we don't have that high of a visibility as, you, as we would like to see. Um, we need, you need to get your name out there. You need to get your name into these top level aggregators, into these smaller listings, even in local city, immediate city type directories like Alienable. Um, as well, uh, so that you can get your name out there, get that phone number solidified, and get that address out there as well. So definitely, citation, citation, citation. Work on that. As well. So map is name, address, phone number. Yes. Right, and you want to make sure that it's consistent across mm -hmm. every single place that cites your business. Right. Uh, that creates kind of validation for Google. Again, that third-party validation. That you need. Um, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, so under uh, Google Analytics in, the, in my dashboard that I'm seeing that I'm seeing uh, like top refers for, for the site. Mm -hmm. They're like sites that I don't even know what they Name are. Name one. What's that? Name one. Okay, it's um, NUB, uh, NUB, uh, NU build, builder dot info. So it's NU builder dot info. It's a plus, I mean without, it's a possibility. You never know where things are going to come from. It could come from back. As far as a referral, that basically means that it came from, OK. Oh, spam. 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 Yeah. Whether well, they're just trying to get your attention. Go back. Yeah. So, so you would go back to their site, yeah. Yeah. So, how do so I get there, rid of it? Or yeah. I don't? There's a way to get rid of it. Basically, you go into um, the admin. Look at your refers. Look and see what kind of garbage is in there. I know you're going to end up having to click back. But make a list. Get a list of all the domains. When you're in the admin panel, you'll see something called a filter, OK? A domain filter. You're going to want to put all of those in there. If you have 5,000 clicks a day, who cares? If you have 50 and 20 of these are coming from this type of spam, yeah, you're going to want to get rid of it so you can get a good idea of exactly what's going on. So you can put a domain filter in there to okay. get rid of all of these uh, domains, clean them out, so that you can see what's really going on. Thank you. Thank you. You Go also ahead. don't have each one tag on your homepage. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you talked about press releases. Do you have a service you like to use for that? I, I try not to recommend specific services. Uh, whatever you feel comfortable working with is the best one. Uh, uh, Anything? Like, how do you... I would, I mean, depends, <laughs> depends on what you want to do, right? So there's national press releases, there's uh, 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 local runs, there's the ones that, like, target specific news outlets. Uh, the big ones, uh, uh, PR Newswire or something like that. Sorry. I'm, uh, we usually, so what we do is we recommend it uh, and our clients handle it on their own. So we, we don't usually touch the actual traffic for, for SEOs. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? We still have time. Go ahead. So when you were recommending for my site for the titles, I know um, like if, if it's photomaps.com slash for him, would a better uh, title be like uh, gifts for him or photo maps for him, or what do you recommend? Um, I think it would depend really on what you, you want that page to rank for. So, okay. um, and, and you can use SEMrush to do like some keyword research to uh -huh. see which keywords have more search volume. You okay. probably want it to focus it more towards that. Okay. Um, if you really want to be relevant to people that are searching for gifts for him, uh -huh. then, then use gifts. Or you could even do um, photo, photo, mats, photo mats for him, uh, gifts for dad. Or, okay. or something like that. So you can you can incorporate both into okay. your page title. You have, I mean, six, seven, 65 to 70 plus a little extra space, so you okay. can just put that all in there. And you and, don't need to have your domain name in the page title either for that stuff. Just focus on really your, your pages. 
Oh, so I just removed the domain name. I could just do it. You don't need the domain name. On the, in your inner pages on your page title, Google understands oh. that these pages belong to this domain. Domain. So that's not useful information that you're putting into the page title okay. by having the domain name there. And in addition to doing all the things you guys recommended, how will Yoast help? Like, what what will Yoast do in addition to us doing all this stuff? So Yoast basically allows you to customize all of those things uh -huh. easily without needing to go into the, like your theme template files and like update all of that stuff. So okay. Yoast, you can, on the bottom of every single page, there's an option to put in uh, a page title. You can okay. put in a new um, formula for your category pages in Yoast settings. So it's either one or the other. So I can do it through Yoast or I can choose to do it manually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on, I know people really focus on SEO and then gone away from it more. Like, you know, there's definitely a gain to getting higher ranking, and does that translate to more business or higher conversions? And is it just about, you know, what are your thoughts? I know that's your Yeah, reason. so the, you got to look at SEO as, as like a, uh, there's a funnel, right? Uh, a funnel. And a funnel, a funnel, right? As far as the key performance indicators for SEO. And that, that kind of goes for everyone, right? If you're going to work with an SEO uh, um, or an agency or you do SEO on your own, you got to understand what your indicators are, like what, what how to measure. Your results. So, if you think of it as an upside down triangle, the top would be improvements in rankings, right? Now, improvement in rankings doesn't necessarily mean that you can get traffic, right? Because you could move from page three to page two, but nobody goes to page two, right? It's like that joke where do you hide a dead body, right? On page two because nobody looks there, right? Page two of Google. Uh, so, the second part of that upside down triangle would be traffic, right? Organic traffic. So, if you're ranking for relevant keywords, you're getting relevant traffic to your site. And then the smallest part at the bottom of the triangle is conversions, organic conversions. So organic ranking for relevant keywords gets you relevant traffic, relevant traffic gives you conversions, right? Those are the three KPIs for SEO, right? And the, the SEO soup is the same. It's the same ingredients. It's just how you apply them because every site is different, right? We're going to clean up technical. We're going to clean up crawlability, accessibility. We're going to build content, we're going to build links, put it all together, cross our fingers, and hopefully Google ranks it, right? Um, really fast. This is a really good extension, Chrome extension. Um, tech SEO, take a picture, write it down. Not only that it will on the fly tell you what the title tag is, characters, it will tell you if it's a good amount of length in the characters, what your meta description is, your H1 tag, how many characters, what it is, your canonical, right? And then down here, this is a wealth of information. Most of these are paid tools, but at least you have access to them, you know what they are, right? So like, if you want to look at domain info, you have, you know, Spy on the Web, you have Wayback Machine. Uh, for inbound links, you have Moz Open Site Explorer, Majestic, Ahrefs, Ahrefs we used today in front of you guys. Uh, metrics tools, SEMrush, just like the one I was showing you guys. So this tool will kind of like, thank you, will feed you into the rest of all the other stuff. Uh, that is all the time we have. Thank you guys.